out to two things, and I got something easy for you this week. It's a little car break. Just a little baby. You just gotta nurture it a little bit. You know what I mean? Gucci, Gucci, goo. Gucci, goo. Gucci, goo. That type of stuff, guys. And I'm gonna show you how to make some easy money. So you have identified carburetor problems and how to straight get up in there. We appreciate you, dudes. I picked up this little 50 for uh, 250 bucks on Marketplace. I'll show you the ad here. And you know, it's gonna bring 1200 bucks. Had to put a battery in it and clean the carburetor. It doesn't run, this is why you buy it. Carburetors, guys, they're simple and uh, there's a little bit of satisfaction there when you get one running too. You know you're gonna make some money, that's cool. And uh, more importantly, you're gonna have fun on it. Look at the little rig over right here, this thing wouldn't run earlier. Let go easily. There you go, perfect. What, you didn't know how to stop? As soon as we're done, ripping donuts. Guys, dirty carburetors, couple symptoms you may be looking for. One, your engine won't start. Two, your engine's flooding. Three, your engine's leaking on the floor. You know, your carburetor's dripping. Uh, four, it won't idle. Five, it's idling wrong. Six, it's doing something, you know, at the top of the throttle that you're not liking. Seven, maybe you're getting you some backfiring or some, uh, you know, some backfiring or just some bogging out on it. And, you know, there's a lot of other symptoms that could arise, mainly not starting. In this video, we're just gonna let you get up in there. We're gonna show you how to diagnose it, fix it, get you back ripping again, because I know that's what you guys wanna do. The only reason you're in a carburetor, you either wanna make some money or have some fun, or both. All right, boys, welcome to it. Got a few different style carburetors here. And I'm going to show you, there's only really three basic style of carburetors. They all mainly work off of the same principle, but these are some two-stroke carbs. These are some four-stroke carbs. These have a diaphragm in the top and a much different throttle mechanism. This is your good old 400EX carburetor. I know a lot of you guys probably recognize that. We're going to get up in here. We're going to take a look at some of the differences in here, how to tune them, what's going on when you're turning those screws, in-depth how to clean one, how to tune one. And guys, it's easy stuff. And even though they're all different, they're really all, they're all the same. It's the same stuff, guys. So get up in there. Be sure and like and subscribe. Share to your friends. Comment on this video. If you have any tips and tricks that we don't mention, carburetors commonly found on two-strokes, guys. Makuni style carburetor here. I think they call it a VM style. It's very similar to the PWK, except for the internals are a little different. So the PWK... They're not always going to be bigger, but they usually are, it seems like. It's pretty much all the same thing. They, got a, they both have a choke lever that does the same thing. They both have an idle screw. They both have an air fuel circuit like every other machine. And uh, the internals really aren't that much different. So we're going to get up in there and show you guys some of the insides of these things. And all carburetors are the same, guys. If you can maintain a clean workspace and you can get the inside of them clean, you should have no problem getting fuel to your engine. Let's talk real quick about adjusting the carburetor, guys. So, before you take your carburetor off, there's a drain on the bottom of it. And a lot of people don't think that this would be adjusting your carburetor, but it is. You're going to crack it open and let all the fuel dump out of the overflow or dump out of the drain to make sure you're even getting fuel. And honestly, if you fill it back up with fresh fuel, you may end up starting your machine. The b gas in a bowl goes bad a lot faster than it does in a gas tank, and it clogs up your innards and all kinds of other stuff. So all carburetors have a drain on it. Some of them have a screw on the side. Some of them have a bolt on the bottom that you just loosen. You don't even have to take this all the way off if you don't want to. You loosen it up pretty good, everything's gonna dump out. Here's another adjustment for you. You've got this slide in here that when you open the throttle, it, go, it opens up. On the side of the carb, there's an adjustment for your throttle slide. And as you turn it in, you guys see the gap starting to form at the bottom and the further I go in with it, the more air and fuel, the more air it's going to let go by. As you can see now, there's a good gap at the bottom because when you throttle it, the slide goes up. So same thing in reverse. Guys, if you have trouble starting your machine and your idle is a little high, that could be causing you can't properly choke it when you've got 
air getting introduced to the system. You can also choke a, a bike's carburetor by putting your hand over it because you're just trying to stop the airflow. They all have air fuel screws right here, which this is one that has a setting and there's a lot of tuning involved with it. A good baseline on most carburetors is two screws out. So you screw it all the way in and you back it out two screws. But if you're taking this off and you're gonna clean it and it always worked before, you would take your screwdriver, you would count the screws in. There's half, one, and it's fully seated. So whenever I clean it and I put it back in, when I take it out, I'd put it all the way back in and then I'd go out one and a quarter turns. That way it's back to where it was when I started. I'm going to open up this carburetor real quick and show you the inside of it and give you a little bit better explanation as to what's going on here. But before I do, here's another style carburetor. Your throttle opens behind this diaphragm and then vacuum will open this up as needed. Throttle cable doesn't go on the top like your basic two-stroke carburetor, or even a lot of four-stroke carburetors. It doesn't go on the top, it goes on the side for this butterfly here. And then this has a diaphragm on top of it, which just consists of just a, uh, a spring and a, a rubber boot and a needle. We'll get into that here in a second. On the top, you basically got a diaphragm like this on now. with the needle on it and this spring goes inside of it you don't if you're ever cleaning your carburetor you do not want to get carb spray on this because it'll mess the rubber up swell it up very simple just goes in just like that guys this bolts this has a little retainer in there put it right back on this particular 400 ex carb has the same system we're going to get into how to clean your carb and a little bit later in the video I'm going to pull this bowl off and show you a few things, as well as the top. So you take your yeah, Phillips usually. You get up in there. That's the bowl. When you see the carburetor, you get a carburetor that's leaking. It's because the, the float's hung and it's coming up above this, which you can see sits above the edge of the carburetor. And it lets the fuel out of here so it doesn't end up in your engine, guys. You're going to have your float and a needle. That determines how much fuel sits in the bowl. And as the bowl fills up with fuel, the float goes up, plugs a hole. Lots of times if you have a carburetor that's leaking, that needle is stuck due to bad gas or something like that. Or um, the float adjustment could be out of whack. But if, you, if you've never adjusted the float and it always worked before, chances are you've got dirt in it. You got you a couple jets here, a main jet and an idle jet. When you take the top off of the carburetor, you've got a spring and a slide. Oh, that needle's not in there, right? This isn't, this carb's incomplete, apparently. Um, that goes in the top. And this needle sits in here. And you put in your throttle cable and then there's typically a gold or brass piece that sits over the top of all this and holds it in place. So this needle goes into your carburetor through that hole in the bottom and it goes into this main jet. So when you hear people talking about adjusting the needle height, you've got your clip here and four ridges and you can move it up or down. If you move it up, it's gonna lower the needle into the jet, giving it less fuel. If you lower it down, if you lower it, it's gonna raise the needle, allowing more fuel through the jet. So that's an adjustment you can make right there without jetting it. When you install these, they only go in one way. This notch goes towards your idle adjustment and this groove, as you can see in the carburetor, there's a little gold groove right there. It's this, it's this piece and this has to line up in it. And then once you've got that going on, See how the needle's not in the hole? You gotta just make sure the needle's in the hole. Sometimes you gotta reach in there if it's a crappy carburetor and it falls right in. So as you pull the throttle, this comes up, allowing air through, which vacuums fuel out of this bowl into the carburetor, into the engine. This screw is the same as the idle screw on the other one, air fuel screw. So it restricts the amount of air to go through this circuit 
which ends up vacuuming through this jet, which is your idle jet. When you jet a carb, all people are talking about is taking this end off of this jet and putting a bigger one in. Bigger hole, which is gonna let more fuel in. This jet here, it's kind of the same thing, but it would just be a whole jet swap. It's not two pieces. Your jet on the inside has a bunch of holes in it and fuel blasts through them. It's still idling too high. You can check your throttle cable adjustment because it may be tightened up in this, especially if you're swapping carbs. There's also an adjustment here for your throttle cable. Always have me a good Phillips, a couple good flatheads. You'll need a small one a lot of the times to get main jets out, even smaller than that sometimes. A wire brush. You can get these on Amazon or you can get them with carburetors sometimes. They, they're for pushing, trying to push stuff out of jets. I also have a pick here for it really helps getting the float out. Guys, you need you some brake cleaner, some gloves, some compressed air goes a long way. This really helps clean your carburetor better than pretty much anything, especially with with some uh, brake clean. You can put gasoline in a bottle. A lot of people uh, use gasoline to soften the stuff up. You can soak your jets in it because lots of times your jets won't get clean. Uh, other ways to clean out your jets. I'm going to get a jet here so you can see what I'm talking about. So this here's a jet kit. These are idle jets. Then you've got your mains, like the one I showed you, you would swap out on the top of that other one, which are in different sizes and they have numbers on them. This is your idle jet. Lots of times it gets clogged up. You can see those holes there. And there's also a tiny one that goes all the way through it. This will get clogged up. If it's clogged up, your bike's not gonna idle and it's not gonna run right at open throttle because it's not getting enough fuel. It needs that fuel at open throttle as well. And you gotta get it cleaned out. So, this little guitar wire work, some picks, some stuff like that. Guys, honestly, I've taken my torch and held one of those jets before and lightly heated it and then blow, blew it out, hit it with brake clean and repeat until it burns the stuff out of it. Compressed air works really well. You can always replace the jet if you have to, but there's a few other methods. I'll take brake clean and I'll fill up a... I'll fill up the bowl of the carburetor while it's off and I'll put the jets in it, let it sit for an hour or two to soften the stuff up. A couple other methods here. There's a basket in here. You put all the metal carb parts in, the carb body, everything that isn't plastic and rubber, and you soak it, the jets, everything like that, and it'll soften it up, guys. If you get a really bad carburetor, that's a pretty good way to go. Also, the ultrasonic cleaner. It's got a basket in it. It's a little dirty right now. I just brought it back inside. It'll get all up in that carburetor and clean it out. You guys wanna have a clean workspace. You don't wanna be cleaning the carburetor and a bunch of dirt. You don't wanna introduce stuff into the carburetor, that's for sure. So, and this is the Polaris we did yesterday. Um, this is the Polaris that's in the video. And guys, it runs perfect now. Um, we've got the fuel off. As you can hear it idling a little high, my son was riding it yesterday and uh, it got warm and started not liking it. So you can hear that idle and we'll put to the test what we were talking about just a minute ago. Flathead Phillips. Go right on the side of the carburetor. See that brass screw? I think it's a, it's a Phillips. I'm going lefty here, guys. I don't know. All right. And then you turn her to the left. You hear the engine the RPMs go down. Now I'm gonna turn it to the right. It's as simple as that, dudes. With the carburetor on, real easy adjustment. Got the carb off this little 50. We're gonna clean it. Very similar. You know, carbs get bigger, and there's a few different styles. But other than that, they're mostly all the same, guys. This bowl here, two Phillips. You want to clean the outside off first if it's dirty. This one doesn't look too bad. Two Phillips right there and right there. Pull the bowl and show you what we're dealing with. 
So I open it up. As you can see, there's supposed to be a gasket there. It's right there. There's a little bit of dirt in this bowl. The bowl just holds the fuel, guys. It sits in the bowl. And as the fuel level rises, it pushes this needle up into this hole and doesn't let any more gas into the carb. That's why whenever you have your carburetor on your bike and it's leaking gas out to overflow, it's typically because this thing is stuck and then fuel is making its way above this needle, above this little valve and coming out your overflow. Because if it didn't do that, it would go into your engine. It'd end up in your top end of your air box. Gloves, guys. Some carburetor cleaner of your choice. Compressed air. Next step on this one, pull these two jets out. These two flatheads maybe are using, actually use a flathead on this and an eight mil on this one and get this float out. See how I push that pin with my finger? All you do is grab a hold of it, pull it out. Have you a clean workspace, get some pliers, pull that pin out. The float will lift out. This needle comes off. There's not many parts, guys, don't worry. Flathead on this one. Make sure you got a decent one. That's your idle jet. This is what the fuel is supplied through this at idle. This one, usually some pliers or an eight mil. Take it off. All right, we'll come back to that in a second. Carb spray in all these passages. No matter what carb you're using, through the jet holes, through the fuel inlet, watch your eyes. Back through the fuel inlet, through these two passages that mix the, that allow air in to mix with the fuel and to help with the vacuum, all the way through this thing, all over it. So it softens up anything, oh, right in the bird. So it softens up anything that's in there, right? Work this choke back and forth. Always make sure this screw's tight whenever you pull off a carburetor because these are known to vibrate out, fall down, get sucked through the intake into the engine and then this hungry, 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 hungry hippos with the valves from that point. So I hit it with a little of this, some compressed air. This is the best. The best for it then. Always shut all this caca out of it. No matter what kind of carb you got. There you go. See, she's clean. You hold on to them tight and you try and blow through them and then you plug the end do the same thing let it sit for just a second with that carb spray in there this will give you a good visual representation of what's going on here guys all these holes hard to see i know but when i plug the end tasty guys don't get this brake cleaner for one reason it's the stankiest It'll have the whole shop smelling like there's a leak somewhere. Basically, the float floats that up. That little needle plugs the hole so gas doesn't keep going in. And you don't want to get brake clean on that. If you can help it, it'll swell it up. Last step before reinstalling it, make sure you clean up this needle really well. It ain't got no old gas or dirt or gunk on it. These throttle slides will only go in one way. Before you install it, especially on a kid's quad, especially on a quad that's automatic, you can look in the barrel and see if the throttle is installed properly because it's all the way in. A lot of people find out when they start it up and they're like, oh man, my thing's revving half throttle because it'll be in here something like this. Make sure that's good. Check the operation of your choke because this will save you a lot of time. Once you have it all together, you don't know if that maybe this ain't closing, the throttle, you know, you just want to look because you can before you put it back together. Appreciate you dudes watching the video. Lots more on the channel. How to Tuesdays is a thing now. I'm gonna take it back. I'm serious. Next week on How to Tuesdays, we got you a nice pit bike slash quad four stroke engine rebuild, guys. And we're gonna do it. We already did it. I got the footage and it's going on the channel next Tuesday. So get up in there. Be sure and like and subscribe. Jump up on Time Machine ATV's Instagram if you wanna see some stuff for sale. There's lots of stuff going up all the time. Lots of times, little bitty carburetor issues. 
get people frustrated with bikes and the, the prices plummet, man. And then I swoop in, you know, I swoop in, I get it cheap. They blame it on the gas. They blame it on Trump or Biden, or they blame it on whoever. And, uh, and then I get a good deal on a machine because they didn't know how to clean a carburetor. And guys, it takes like two or three weeks now for gas to turn bad, especially in a bowl.